going to be going down to Waterloo uh, to a great French influence cafe called the French House. Where not only we're going to get some fantastic coffee, but also they make all their own French pastries and breads that they all bake on site. I guess for us coffee lovers, it's a great haunt, you know, when we want to soak up that real coffee culture. A lot of places are, offer a different atmosphere, uh, a different look, so you've you got to be made feel comfortable. Like, for example, coming here, you're, you're looking forward to maybe sitting at the community table, chatting with some friends, or sitting down at one of the banquets, sitting or outside on the balcony, and you're in, absorbing that atmosphere. And the next part would be the, the service. You know, and you're acknowledged. The acknowledgement of you arriving and being there also makes it being part of a great cafe. And it's also the way the cafe presents itself in terms of food, um, coffee machines, the atmosphere, it looks inviting and makes you want to come back. We're in a good cafe and good side of, of fresh coffee and great coffee is that first you can just take a look at the hopper where this is where the, the fresh coffee beans are kept and you can see that it, it's relatively clean, there's not a lot of oils being built up in there um, so we know they take care of the, the daily cleaning procedures. But you also even take a look at the beans from through, through the hopper and depending on the roast will indicate on how it they should present in terms of roast colour, they're all uniform. You don't want a lot of cracked beans or, or small damaged beans in there at all. So from a coffee drinker point of view, waiting for a coffee, you can, you can take a look at that if you have access to that and that should give away a good sign of the place you're in. If George has a break now, he might pour us a, a couple of uh, espressos. The espresso is the base of every coffee. So you can potentially mask a, a bad espresso with some milk, but it will come through. So this is, this is the first step, the first step to a great coffee. Obviously, George will grind on the mud, pack the coffee. And, and what we're looking for in this, in this is a, a delay. From when he hits the button, the extraction button, there'll be a delay of between three to five seconds. And then the coffee will start to pour at a steady pace. And for the espresso that George, George is going to draw, we're probably going to look for another, say, 20 seconds on top of that. So you're looking at about that 20 to 25 second time lag, and you'll get a beautiful 25 mil espresso golden, golden crema. Just even come into it, like, does it coat the back of the spoon? The overall experience, is it pleasant? And that's what you're after. But also you can stir it, and you can see how the crema's reforming also. You know, that's a good sign, good espresso. You've got to have the correct grind so that it's not too coarse where the coffee, once it's packed and tamped and locked in and extracted, that it's gonna to flow too freely and it's gonna under extract. And, and vice versa, you don't want the grind to be too fine where it's gonna take a long time and it'll just be a bit of burnt flavors, but actually burning the coffee because it, the time is just, is just lagging. So as I said before, what you want is just that balance. 